this talk will be a little in unexpected for some of you because it's an engineer who is known to have nerdy jokes, efficiency, optimization, love to have numbers, and who doesn't talk to people a lot will be talking to you about communication. And this is exactly why I came to engineering school. Um, a lot of people ask me, if you are in engineering school, you would love science and math since when you were five. Not true. My high school was more about humanity, social science, political science, and languages. And I was able to learn a lot of different debates, poli like politics, global issues, and I was on the debate team doing model United Nations, mock trials, and a lot of forensics. While I was doing that, I was able to learn that there are so many cool technologies and innovations, but it's not implemented well enough because we don't have a communication skill, that the cool technologies are not well translated enough to the public, and that's how I got interested in engineering. And although I was learning a lot about math and science, I was also able to learn more about communication. I was learning how to work with different groups of people. I was learning their perspectives, and I also was learning different way of solving solutions and having different like systematic way of thinking. But because I'm an engineer, I'll try to translate some of the things that I learned, and I'll start from the problem statement. Let's go with really broad and general world problems that we've been seeing since when we were in elementary school. People are starving in developing countries. We are having a lot of socioeconomical inequalities. A lot of natural resources are depleting, disasters. And these problems have been there since like 10 years ago. And after decades, after we grow up, it's still there. And when we're discussing those problems, we realize that we use communication a lot. I myself was using word communication in the Model United resolution when I was writing it. And in the last clause was all about increasing awareness, creating educational opportunity, having communication. And the words are overused like a cliche that it almost becomes we just use it without knowing what it really means. And so what is communication and what's the point of it? Let me give you an example. When I was working with nonprofit organizations in Korea during my high school, I was able to have a workshop about learning how the global aids can work more efficiently. And there was this one lecturer who just inspired me, and he was talking about different donation platforms. And when we, as you probably all know, there is donate for your sponsor for your child, and you get to choose your own child and pay, for, pay 50, 70, $100 per month to help them buy food, meal plans, or books, stationaries, and all the basic needs. And you'll get their photo, their letters, and their names, and their situations. And what really happens, however, is that because it's not enough money to make an enough impact, you get to collect 30 people's money and build an infrastructure. And you make 30 kids collect, um, gather together in the same classroom or public area and just make them copy and paste a template. I know it is an inevitable, and this is one way of making the aids more efficient. However, it was just heartbreaking for me because I saw this is why I wasn't committed enough. I wasn't doing anything more than just paying $50 per month because of this missing part. And I thought of a different example. This is actual letter from my sister, who is nine years younger than me, who's in Korea. And I moved to New York City four years ago for my college. And ever since then, I've been exchanging letters with my, with my sister. And of course, she's on Facebook. I'm friends with her. Um, she's, I can Skype her. I can call and message her all the time. But this letter is so different for me, and this letter is also different from the letters that I got from my child that I sponsored. And although you're saying the same thing, that I want to talk to you, I want to share my experiences, 
I want to meet you. It's just so different, and the missing part was that all the time and effort and all the emotions that is compressed into that limited space, that was something that just made this letter so different from any other handwritten letters. And this is how I see communication. So what I'm seeing communication is that through conversation, you're basically creating an overlap. You're creating an overlap between your world and someone else's world that you're having a conversation with. And that overlap becomes your basic common ground for relationship. And it sounds really straightforward that you are just finding a ground, building a building, but how do you do it? And those are some of the elements that I was seeing while I was thinking about this question. And I believe that communication and relationship is connected with different languages. And I want to share some of the examples that I saw throughout journey to find this answer to the question. So first example that I was finding out uh, was my myself moving into New York City. Leaving home is a huge change, and it's a lot of challenge. But it's, I think it's more than leaving the place where you call home for 20 years. I think it's more than leaving your parents, leaving your fam family, leaving your friend circles. But I feel like it's more about the things sur surrounding you. When you walk down the street, the signs are different. When you see buildings, they all look really different. The clothing store, stationery, bookstores that you go, used to go to, they're not there anymore. And when you see different street foods or different things that you get around the city, it's totally different. And when you're, even when you're craving for something spicy, they're not spicy enough for you when you're getting in America. So it's really funny that everything's so different, but at the same time, I was finding some of equivalents of Korean culture in New York City. So I was able to find some food that I would think like it's really similar to Korean and was having it. And I found my own street food that I would get when I get back home. So although the language is really different, although the, there's a lot of cultural difference, I was able to find a lot of common ground and I was able to survive in the city. I was able to sustain myself. And this is more of a literal and cultural side, but there's something more in difference in language, and I would say it's in discipline. Starting engineering school, it's definitely different. How you write exams, how you write reports, papers, are totally different from back then in high school when you're writing your research, culture research paper or your resolutions or preparing for your debate competitions. The way you communicate, it sounds nerdy, but for engineers, math is their language. And their way of communication, thought process is totally different. That even if you are having a same modal, if your conditions are different, if you're making different assumptions, if you're having different time scales, the numbers will be different and there will be two different independent ideas. And even if you're in the same discipline, let's say you're in conference that's about cancer diseases. If you are a scientist, he or she will be starting their presentation about discoveries that they're making, observations. But on the other hand, engineers will start their presentation with problem statement, how the existing system is problematic, how to make it more efficient, how to make it better. Even within engineering field, if you're an electrical engineer, they'll have a different approach. If you're a chemical engineer, you will talk about different reactor systems. And even though you have so many differences and different approaches and different questions, at the end of the day, you want to cure, pe cure people's diseases and you want to make the world a better place. You want to solve problems. And knowing that we have one destination, we have the same destination that we really want to go to, I think that really makes us to think as ourselves as one, even if we have different questions to answer, even if we have different directions and different approaches. And let's just imagine that if you are 
make, start making overlaps with people around you, like friends, family members, and coworkers, or anyone around you. And they will also start making overlap, and then multiplies and extends. And when that overlap becomes so large that we have one overlap that everyone can stand on together, and I believe that positive shift that we are going to get is so significant and so impactful that I was really excited to share these experiences with you all. And also, I'm really excited to see this overlap happening here at this place like with every single one of you. Thank you so much.